I'd like to welcome everyone today to our celebration of the snow leopard in observance of International Snow Leopard Day, which is actually October 23rd. Tomorrow for most of us. In case some of you are new to us, we are the Snow Leopard Conservancy. And it's our mission to ensure snow leopard survival and conserving mountain landscapes by expanding environmental awareness and sharing innovative practices through community stewardship and partnerships. The International Snow Leopard Day uh, began with the Global Snow Leopard Ecosystem Protection Program or what we call GSLIP. Uh, we're actually celebrating the 10 years of uh, the GSLIP's beginning. Um, it marks the anniversary of signing the Bishkek Declaration by all 12 snow leopard range countries. It happened in October of 2013 at the very first global forum on the conservation of the snow leopard held in Bishkek, Kyrgyz Republic. Based by the adoption of this, the snow leopard range countries pledged to ensure that snow leopards and the people who live among them thrive in healthy ecosystems that contribute to the prosperity and well being of our countries and the planet. My co host for today is Marcia Civic. She's the owner and founder of Be Provided Conservation Radio. Um, she's an artist. Here is some of her artwork. And Marcia, would you like to tell us just a little bit about yourself? Oh, oh sure. Gosh, where to begin? So, I currently, I, I'm just really um, sharing hopeful stories in my podcast of people working in the world to help protect our planet. And it's a passion project and it's just a good way for me to give back. And I love helping out uh, all, all animals and the snow leopards and cheetahs and, and big cats, especially. So thanks for joining everyone. And thanks for participating, Marcia. You're welcome. We're going to begin today's program with a couple short readings from the book, Searching for the Snow Leopard, Guardian of the High Mountains, which I had the ultimate pleasure of working on with Bjorn Pearson, a uh, photographer from Sweden. Uh, this cover photo <clears throat> is by one of our contributors, Oriel Alamani. Uh, it was from one of his trips uh, he and his wife, I believe, did three uh, photo trips to India. The first is entitled A Voice in the Silence. It's written by Katie Duffy. She's an independent snow leopard researcher. She's from Ohio. And uh, she's quite a writer. It's quite amazing. I bent down to look at a pug mark in the powdery snow. The dryness of the climate had perfectly preserved each of the billions of snowflakes, allowing the individually unique icy stars to sparkle under the cloudless sky. Just as I was trying to estimate when the snow leopard had crossed this valley and observe which way it had headed, a chill ran up my spine at the sound of a piercing cry that echoed among the peaks. My teammate and I froze. The overwhelming silence of the land was replaced with the rapid thumping of my heart in my chest. One more time, the yowl reverberated into the valley. I stood looking at my teammate in awe with two words being trailed by a puffy cloud of my frozen breath and a huge grin on my face, snow leopard. This beautiful photograph um, was taken by Bjorn. And uh, how many of you can spot the snow leopard? <laughs> I think it truly speaks to where the snow leopard lived, what kind of an environment. So beautiful. Have you all seen the snow leopard?
And before I read the next uh, reading from Searching for the Snow Leopard, I want to remind all of our guests today that you can hop on or hop off and then hop back on anytime you like. And if you would be sure to mute your microphone and probably your camera until we get to the Q&A portion of the program today. Um, that way, because we have a lot of video and photographs um, to see. This is from the chapter, The Bond. It's minus four degrees and the sun is starting to go down. For almost an hour, you've been lying dead still, observing the snow leopard making its way up the mountainside. Only about 200 feet away, it suddenly stops. Anxious not to be discovered, you hardly dare to breathe. Your frozen body is in pain, and ultimately you have no other choice than to change position. There is only the slightest sound of your movement, yet the snow leopard has reacted, your presence having been revealed. Glimmering in the approaching darkness, the snow leopard's icy blue eyes meet yours. Transfixed, you experience a silent communication with the great cat. For no more than a moment or two, it studies you, then turns away and moves on, having acknowledged the presence of its uninvited guest. Throughout our program today, we're going to move through several of the snow leopard range countries. And the first word um, visiting is Kyrgyz Republic. Um, this Next presentation will be a film of a biographical film of Japarkul Rambakov. He is a Kyrgyz sacred site guardian. He's the founding member of land, uh, one of the founding members of the Land of Snow Leopard Network, a uh, spiritual guide and giver of blessings. Japarkul works with uh, LOSL, which is part of a groundbreaking collaboration between Western and indigenous science with two overriding goals reviving ancient conservation practices and creating pathways for indigenous cultural practitioners or what we call ICPs, to be co-equal partners in research and planning for the conservation of snow leopards. The network is striving to help the GSLEP governments understand and embrace the snow leopard spiritual nature and fundamental place in indigenous practices, as well as to share knowledge of how to protect the species. Uh, Jarbra Kool's uh, film was uh, created by the Rural Development Fund together with the Snow Leopard Conservancy Land of Snow Leopard Network um, under the uh, a grant from the IUCN SOS program. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hayradan şamal, hayradan akkal suunu sarakkanı, hayradan cangırdın düşürlü günü, ala bulut bulup, şunday bir tariyat ezü sırda alıp yattı. Ben dağ ettim, bay bay bir şey yaşlanıp karasam, niye oldu dep, dersan dağ çıktı. Oşa benim üçüncü yolu metken de bay bir şey maydı. Vay özün karaçayım, ben hiç de gücük, ben ayet veririm dedi. Oşa benim ben eşke çırp arıpkan da, ak kalpakçan uzun boylu adam gözümle görünüp, iki dağ alı ilim ben karınap, hasta hasta bana hasta dedi. Artına gözde basıp gelgende, otur bana motor, otur dedi. Oşunda ki şan kılganda oturup kaldım. Yemi oğuzum dedi. Ulu söz söyle dedi. Jalpı cürt adam zatka tile dedi. Alakan cay dedi. Ak patanı tile dedi. Yamandıkta tıyılsın, cakşılığı cansın de. Adam zat arı ulansın. Sakaldan ardından hangi bir şey çalgan eken? Emi sen elge adam zapka tileysin. Emi sen cilt tabiyakka tileysin. Emi sen gerçek muğunga tileysin. Adam zat arulansın de. Adam zatın can bilesi ağarsın de. Adam zat ulu kasiyettin ulu köşütü başlasın de. Adam zat bilgisin de. Camandıktan tıyılsın de. Yakşılıkta bağıtasın de. Hep şurada ayan gelin. 10 yıldan çeyrek oldu. Bunun sonunda en kızığı oşol bizden atalmağlardan kasiyet eken. Oşol aksakalı menen ardındağı ağıl biz oşol menen tağdırıma baylanışıp kaldı o. Bana zep olduğunuzda, bana zata üstünün yanında kolda uçuk atarı cürgünde kara çağırga olan kaptalından çamıngan deyip çoluk kogcalarıstan canday salıp kamıngan deyip yetekinden karazan erdi murdun jalanıp sur zol borusu kamıngan deyip o bağırdığın bir de yalganda mışık başkular bolu atırlar kaulan atarı anan bizden eneler batır törörde zol borusluğun kaulandığın jüroktörüne talak boluşkan eneler Niye bu bilbirs çöğünü dağıtılsak, bizim Kırgızistan'da Türkülük'ün ayında alıp gelgende çağır çağılgan da ayıp kötü atırı. Kümüş deyken de atat. Ana toğı koca oyunu deyip. Atababalarının biz geçine kege üstte ayıtkan sözleri oyunca 17. 18. kılımlarda Talas'tın Beştaş toğularında, Genkol toğularında, Kırgız alatı olsun da, Talas alatı olsun da, Kıptıgın, akıl pisler, eski tekeler, ayıllar, zol borçlar, cür çeken. Olsa zol borçlar, çok korku etti. Akıl pisler bolsa omuna ki çok korku korkunçunda durat. Yanıman çıktı da, akıl pis. Yıl metre aralıkta çıktı da, neyse kuğuz geledikken ayı var. Bunda yerge yakın geledikken de. Şunda çekilirken, şunda katı getirdikken, beni bir karadı da. Bir canımda istikken bir küçük bir balası var. Ben o zaman öz gözüm beni gördüm de. Alda deyken duvanı, alda tatır bayılı. Alda şey, alda şey, alda şey. Manna bir gün yarıya, salından torabı. Ey halda, ey halda, ey halda. Manas Atavuz'un ordosunda, kasiyeti yerde, Bakıt örgüsü de Asan Edat çakında şu yaşlarımızda adi vakıla kayıtıp, iman kayıtıp, tabiat kacakın bol, kasiyet kacakın bol, can dünyamda bayit, camandıktan alış bol degen şu yerde gençse asan atat şadatayın, şu yerde biz işteyiz çakında. Yaşlarına bir akıl nasa atayıtkan yer bu otta, şu yerden üyleğinin baldar batalık gidip de. Ağıl bizden tokumu da kod bizde. O zaman için şu yerde dağı, şunday bir ağır bir çöğünde dağı, yaşlarına mağlumat ayıtıp, şu yerde bağıtını ayıtıp, tabiat bine yakın olsun ayıtıp duruyoruz.
Марасатанда Хасиети Варда, Хасиети Тапот, Пайхамбас Нинда Шапатовар. Был Азарвахта, Чалпу Чутарамзат, Биригет Рамахта, Джанди Леус Двайтеп, Азар Биригет, Джанди Леус Тазартеп, Шундайбер Кречек Тейму, Джак Шелго Тарбилашке, Тамалтаке. Зарплата <gülüyor> О, матка джалгап силет, джан билесен байтып силет, табиат менен сырдап силет. Хасиетті жанварды кейвер адамдар ете бар алда келет. Бірок мен колдың кешінше осыны джан билесіне жанындағы улы сөз менен, улы хасиеттің телегі менен айтқанда көбі түшініп ұлып қалады. Талас деген жермана, манас деген жермана, бақтылу қылығыз жермана. Улу қасиетін есі ерсіп жүре берсін, құдай төп өңірден нұрлап қолдап жүре берсін. Бүгін мазардын тайып тұрауыз, бүгін ағыл бірс ала тоғы жерінде айтылған тілегіміз ақ бұлсын, біз ақ мөңгілі ала тоғы жерін жасаймыз. Біздің тоқойымыз бар, шалбабыз бар, аққан суыз бар, бұлағымыз бар, ең негізі бізден мөңгі бар, біздің тоғыны чоқызы бар. Осы келешек мұңға бектұрды мисал қылып қой өлемді, бектұр. Осындай сенде жаштар бекен болсын, ар намысқа бекен болсын, абері таза болсын, иманы жарық болсын, жан дүнесі байы болсын. Байырқы бабалардың езе оланы берсін, зәратыңар қауыл болсын, жүзіңгер жарық мағнайыңар ақ болып қайрылтасыңар, Ақтай бата ақ болсын, жолың арға бата құт болсын дейлі, омит. Ағырбестен ұрық үзілген сайын жерге жамандық келеді екен. Асы дүйіне елі ағырбесті сақтап қалайлық, табиаты сақтап қалайлық, қашқындар болу атады, су ағындар болу атады, еманы ұсты тазартайлық, табиаты ұсты сақтап қалайлық, құдайға тіленіп қалайлы деп азы жұрт адамызатты Ошыл атабабалар мазарын тайынып, атабабаларын арбайларын рағызырын айтып, анан арбайлар көкіруіне салғанда бата чықсы кенді. Басын көтірет деген сөйді. Бағар үстіңіне чоғыл атауыз. Бүді Құдайдың бұйыруы кенді. Ошын үшін мен атым бағы айтарып қойын, ауды мұталай жапар құл. Улу жолды чиырлап келем. Жан дүйіне дөн аққа иеп келем. Көпчілік ел айыбай қызығып, анан оба, тұра, сақтап қалышы ұз керекен. Антпесе экосистема бұзылады, антпесе табиаты ұз бұзылады, антпесе шында жасалатқан жеріздегі ташқын су арғандай жер түрі көшкі шындай табиаты өзінен емесін бұзат деп елге түшіндіремді. Бүгін зейратың ұрақ болсын, бүгін керебен көшіңі рулана бөлсін аудаке, бүгін Манас атанын қолды ұшысы кен. Ұшы қолды ұшы дайыма сүрет тұрсын. Аруба глобалдарын. Бізден ала тол дервіз бар, ә? Чон бейк асқа толыз бар. Ақ мөңгіміз бар, ә? Бізден табиатымыз қос. Бізден дайыма төрт мезгіріз бар, ә? Жануар, сен үшін ал жақшы тілейт. Сен дағы шоғы қамқорды көр дегенде нәрістегі дағы айтып атқанда, Алардың бір ешкі дүйлесіне бір тазалық аруыланып, алар құт қойып бұғатта, әнткені 
Bu Laristlerin yürek tasa da alar yerge öp gelmeyi tal daima büyük yerde. Alt mı günüsü ne şey? Biz daha ki biz var mı? Var. Al bir kısmının atalganı benim anı azır düğünü eli nelatı izildi. Kuşun saktap kalaydı atalları. Biz daima eşke çıkanda eşke çıkanda gök mök çöptü dursa e? o sonu tebeli ve ye güldürdü üst be ye sındır bay direkleri doğru alan tabiatlı kuatalar de Akil canı sen mi? Ramazan. Atan adı? Avaz. Avaz. Yerden girip çıkıyor atavuz, çatavuz da, her bir girip masamdan. Her bir girip çıkıyor atavuz sayın, hayvay. Hay. Yaşı tülekmenin, bakal koşup be. Koşal yüğünün kere gezegen bulup, yüğünün yüğüne bala şakat olup, rız kızı mol bulup, dastor konu cahilip dursun. Biz koyan girip işte salza, şunda bir at soltu yuvosa gelin degen yaşı tülekmenin kıya usta. Koşu altı mıştan açtan, altı mış beş kere git bakam ben de. Küç kuvat kulay açıyor. Şunda yumuş cirağı işteyken de, kerdeken de canım ezel attı. Ay vay. Yani bana kuday talamdan gökten bir kasiyet buyurup oğun eken. Büt tabiat beni baylanışıp, yer benim yer bulup deydi. Bağı kolça işte bir şey yürüdü deydi ayrılanday. Köpteki mamleketleri varıp geldi. Alarka, bağı biz de kantip kuru koyuyoruz. Kantip tabiat beni baylanışağız. Ben o şunların benim giyimlerine kaçıp gelim. Biraz. Zalkar. Zalkar. Bana ki Zalkar. Zalkar buyursa. Şu kasiyeti 99 yılı Apan Şunday Kuday'ın yoluna çıkan da ulu kasiyet geldiğinde de bana Apan geldi. Anan Apan'ın altında bana sen geldin ayrı tutun. Bana hatı oğlu Zalkar da böyle yakın deli törüldü. Gelişekte olsa ken Zalkar. Zalkar da akılman bolsa ken, danışman bolsa ken, oyçul bolsa ken. Oyton. Oyton. Yet çıkarganda ata vaytkan eken, uruhtar gilet tepçe, yalan birileri gilet tepçe. Ağıl biz dağı kasiyeti canı var da. Şimdi o çok o cilt çıkarken de bana hazır dağı mümkün ağıl biz sizi yerde gelip durun. Altyazı <gülüyor> Ey bali bali Tüğünün kuday kol dop durgan Başınan kıdır darıp durgan Ot boy jarık Can canı bar Bardığına Mermin ızıktığın tövüp durgan 
Nur bol elim, baskan cerin, nur tögülgün, jarıq elim. Kengir koldu, umaylar koldu, tabiat koldu elimde. Ağıl bestin elge abdan paydası var. Adam zatka paydası var. Al tabiatı saktap durgan, ulu toğunun padışası da koyup. Ağıl bist, ağlam menin yerdin ortasındağı energi etkanı. Kasiyette karnap tengdek tırat. O aylan ayın adam zat. Biz ulu uyuk canavarımızda saktap kalaylık. Ağıl biris iyi kemi gelgen, iyi gelgen, topuktu canavar eken. Ağ canavar dep, ata babalar koldu uçuk atarında, sürü uçuk atarında, suyun üç kuvanış kabarın biri de bilişken deyip. Düğün adam zatı ağıl birisi saktap kalaylı dep. Tabiatımızda saktap kalaylı dep, durgan gezde ala tol cerinen, ulu kasiyetli geribendi olay durgan, mezgil geldi. Kant kene biz ağlı besti, saktap kalavuz. Kant kene anın urgun göğü etalavuz. Adam zattın dili tazarıp, imanı jarıqa nurdanıp, can dünesi bayıp, bayırkı babalardın izi menen, bağırdık üstten, okmuştu bu. Biz yoksa ruhani pratikler bir, kasiyetli adamlar bir, ne gerek koğumçuluk hazır, özümüzdün kuruş karışımızda oğundaşımız gerek. Biz arulanışımız gerek. Biz meyrimge boğur kelik kılışımız gerek. O sonunda bizden tabiatı saklanıp, o sonunda bizden ağırlı resimiz özünün yaşı olsun olay vermekçi. Ağıl bizden ulanmışın aytu menen Kelecek muğundu Ulu yolga tarbiye ayımız I love the snow leopard at the end of that. So beautiful. Next in our travels, we're going to move on from Kyrgyzstan to Mongolia. Uh, we have a series of camera trap photos that were taken in the Sutai Mountains of Mongolia by our partner, Claudio Augliaro, who's the founder and director of his NGO Wildlife Initiative. And these were all camera traps. Um, trail camera photos. This one was from November of 2022. January of 23. How well he blends in with that rock. And here we have uh, another feline, <laughs> not quite so large as the snow leopard palaces cats. How many do you see there? One, two, or three? I see three tails. 
which was from August of 2022. And from April of this year. Looks like he's going somewhere with a purple. And now we have some camera trap videography from Claudio and his team. Another little palace cat. So not too happy birds. <laughs> They're really telling him off. It's funny. They're chasing them, kind of. <laughs> yeah. And here at night, and you can see the Tepeyan Musidum on the retina in their eyes. In, in dark conditions. Ah, another pair of mice. Gotta check out the camera. those little ears having um, real small ears like that is an advantage look at the big paw Mark no now this is a distinctive behavior grape Ah, and look, we have another little guy here. Another palace cat. This is in June of 2022. <laughs> In that same spot. Look at that, that the eye. And now we're going to move on from Mongolia to Pakistan. Uh, some camera trap videography from our partner, the BWCDO or Baltistan Wildlife Conservation and Development Organization. And these are from the winter of 2023.
same behavior. Look how perfectly well that animal blended in with the rocks there in the snow. Snowing here. They leave their little calling cards by spraying on overhanging rocks. That snow leopard was checking out who'd been there before. We could snow cat there. This is from February of 23. This is from March of 2023. tail. Mm -hmm. Same scraping behavior. They leave a lot of messages. Ah, oh, my favorite. I love this one. Cat, they can't make up its mind. Did I go this way or that way? Nope. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> Now we're going to um, move along in our program and share some of the artwork and poetry from our contest this year. Uh, this year was our fifth annual artwork and poetry contest um, that we hold and uh, we use uh, their creations to create awareness about the snow leopard. This year's uh, contest, the theme was entitled Harmony and Peril. Exploring climate change, the biodiversity crisis, and the fate of the snow leopard. Uh, from Elizabeth uh, Mirama, Executive Secretary of the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity, she says that climate change is a primary driver of biodiversity loss. Uh, and climate change depends on biodiversity as part of the solution. So clearly the two are linked and cannot be separated. This year's theme highlighted the intricate relationship between climate change, the biodiversity crisis, and the future of the snow leopard species. We encouraged all of our artists and poets that entered the contest to delve into the profound challenges faced by snow leopards due to these extremely important interconnected issues and express their thoughts and emotions through their creations. We also invited them this year to comment on their artwork in poetry. It's a little bit easier uh, to, um, you know, tell your story, but uh, so we asked the artists to also, if they wanted to comment on their, um, to give a description to their artwork. This was the first place um, in combination media, uh, Snow Leopard in the Snow. It was um, liners on paper with computer finalization by Natalia Pavlishina. And this was her uh, description of her artwork. And you can see Princess Ukak there on the shoulder of the cat. This was our first place winner in unique media from Debbie Lockhurst uh, entitled, I See You. Uh, it was an acrylic painting done on slate. Past couple of years, she has painted on feathers. Really something. Beautiful eyes. Mm -hmm. 
This was first place in digital media, The Search by Dogor Bayan Badorj. He said I got that name right. Some of the names are very difficult. Look at that tail. That's a really good um, representation of the tail. And then we have our top 10 uh, traditional media artwork. In 10th place was Please Stand Up for Our Realm, uh, pastel by Ekaterina Drastinia. And this was her uh, comment on her picture. They seem to be looking right at you. She's competed in all of our contests so far. Next in ninth place, we have Mischief with Whiskers by Fiona Anderson, a scratch board. Uh, Fiona is a veterinarian. She's from Australia and she's been a great supporter of the Snow Leopard Conservancy and Snow Leopards. That's beautiful too. And the detail is amazing. Mm -hmm. In eighth place was Pleading Eyes, a pastel with colored pencils from Catherine Williams Marunas. And this one really, you know, speaks to you about all the people behind the cat and then the mountains in the background. In seventh place was Snow Melt for an Early Spring, an oil painting by Susie Gardner. And this was Susie's description of her artwork. Next, we have our sixth place poetry winner, uh, Ghost of the Mountains from Neil. Uh, I live amidst the mountains of the East. If you are lucky to see me, know that you may never see me again. I am the great ghost of the mountains, protector, traveler, and adventurer. As I set out across the mountains, I set myself the challenge to live or die. I am a lover, a protector of my family, yet the world I share with you is becoming more of yours and less of mine. As I battle against the elements of wind, water, heat, and earth, my life is placed on a thin thread, living on the edge of existence. I am the spirit of the mountains, king of my domain, and I witness the changes in my landscape. Sometimes the winters are warm, the winter ice around me is melting, the snow is patchy in parts, and the summers are dry. I live and die for the hunt, but the goats and blue sheep come and go or die of starvation. Sometimes they pause as they capture a glimpse of me, knowing it may be their last look before I strike for my hunt. I am at risk when they stop coming my way or when I search and I find nothing in sight. Some humans enjoy the sport of the hunt. Be warned for what you will do, for my life is as precious as yours. Ask yourself, what is it you seek within? Your beating heart for the ghosts of the mountains will reign over you, reminding you with each passing day that we are equally destined on this planet. We share the same air and we live, love, and die on the same world. If you attack me, you shall be haunted by my spirit that will find you for every hostile move you make. Be warned, I am the snow leopard of the east, spirit of the mountains, protector, traveler, observer, as I witness the fall of our world in your hands. Next we have Future, which was uh, the sixth place traditional art media artwork by Marisa Louis. And the reference photo was from Steve Tracy. Okay. 
Next, we have the fifth place poetry entry from Julie M. Smith, Mountain Majestic. There is beauty in the mountains if you wish to see it. Paw prints lie in the snowy blanket, slowly disappearing into the thicket. Soft fur waiting for a cool breeze, quickly warms up due to no freeze. Water flows in abundance, at first reduced to a trickle to quench a thirst. Food scampers and hides all around, only now nowhere to be found. Little ones will soon be here, may not live to see next year. There is beauty in the mountains, though you may not see it. Next we have the fifth place winner uh, entitled Love. It's a watercolor by Marisa Louis. Her words, sensitive to their life and their survival, this snow leopard touched me with a look that seemed to say, don't touch it. Our fourth place poetry was entitled Steadfast by Sandra McEwen. Oh, wise one of the high, icy heights with frosty forehead and gleaming eyes with startling contrast of toughness and magnificence. What secrets have your ancestors learned and pass on to you now? They're in your ease of quiet stealth in your hurtling effortlessly down harsh stony slopes and in your remarkable resilience in the face of earth's ecologies fraying and the challenges of changing climate. Still, you will never be deterred from your ineffable persistence, for you are one with your mountains, as steadfast as the hills. You have always prevailed, your guttural growls eternally echoing, and you will always continue your timeless struggle in the toughness and magnificence that is also life itself. Our fourth place was the Himalayas, My Home by Anju Panwar Rajesh, a watercolor and gauche with texture. Very beautiful, another beautiful tale. The tail and the eyes are so expressive in all of these. Mm -hmm. Our third place poem was A Melting Paradise by Ann Curtis. Anne has also been a very staunch supporter of snow leopard conservation. A paradise it was, the Himalaya. I fell in love a half century ago with soaring peaks and glittering lakes and plumes of snow blowing from the summits. I climbed through the deep valleys and gorges etched by rivers and through pine and rhododendron forests with strings of ponies sported red plumes and clanging bells. Wild roses and willows grew in dry creek beds. I saw thorny blue poppies on a dry and scrubby hillside where little puffs of dust rose with every step and disappeared into the cold wind. With reverence, I visited Gompas perched on cliffs, their shrine rooms opulent and full of history. Curious shy children laughed with me while their families tended yaks. I fell in love with thin air, expansive views and shining peaks. The majestic guardian that is the elusive snow leopard was often in my thoughts, though never seen. Now the climate shifts, glaciers melt, permafrost warms, the ground dries and tender green meadow grass dies. Blue sheep tear clumps of tough grass, their numbers may dwindle. A hungry snow leopard takes a yak. Herder and animal conflicts may rise. My love is a forlorn love now, yet I do not feel betrayed. For this is not the fault of paradise, nor of the splendor, splendid snow leopard that is its guardian. I am saddened by changes that we seemingly cannot prevent. Species will disappear from the Himalaya, causing disruption in a finely balanced world. What will become of the snow leopards, the flowers, and the children? Yes, I am saddened and afraid that paradise may shrivel and die, unless, like a beautiful snow leopard poised on a rocky cliff, 
we can balance our needs now with those of a future world. This was third place. This uh, artwork struck us. It, it, it looks deep into your soul. It's called Beauty in Peril. It speaks to you. It's uh, colored pencils by Justine Woosnam. And in second place, poetry, the orison of the ounce, Sarah Mills. Spotted cat of mystery who by chance was exiled to the farthest reaches. What can you teach us of beauty and balance? You who have concord with Varal and Boar and the goat-like creatures of Tar and Markor, how will your kingdom fare before your very existence disappears like the mist? It seems every time I look into those eyes, they pounce upon my conscience whole, leading these endangered paw prints etched deep into my alpine soul. They seem omniscient as though they know that I can halt the melting snow, the rising tree line, the dwindling range, the predator known as climate change. And yet for all the guilt I feel, they do not judge me, only appeal where are the ibex and the argali, the rivers that once ran in harmony? Why are my friends the fragmented bow? Why is danger on high not seen from below? For you and I are imperiled the same. My world is also your world to reclaim. Then he turns away from our locked gaze, but there is no home where the livestock graze. And so his rosettes blend into the night his fur feeding into white starlight. Our planet never again to see those eyes rest even the rays of a Himalayan sunrise. And here we have in second place, Save Earth to Save Our Lives, a pastel by Ekaterina and her description of her artwork. Threat and a hope. And the first place poem this year was by Ann Curtis, entitled Snow Leopard's Paradise. Long tail switching lazily, the snow leopard looks down from the cliff top. Snowflakes drift down even in summer, sprinkling her dense fur with white, adding another dimension to the smoke rings on her coat. The storm cloud passes and in the distance are mountain peaks which shimmer in the sun. A lake glitters at the foot of a talus slope and jewel-like flowers punctuate the meadow grass. This beauty is irrelevant to the snow leopard focused on a flock of raw grazing the meadow grass below. Soon she will make a move toward them. She lives a tough though picturesque existence and has lived this way seemingly forever. Her beautiful world has borders the mountains and cliffs and canyons, the brawl and the sweet meadow grass well adapted to life in the high mountains. The snow leopard does not venture beyond these boundaries. Outside these bounds is another world, a world where the air is hazy with smoke and dust, where human activity has caused warming temperatures. Future changes are difficult to fathom and time is running out. Glaciers melt, permafrost thaws and the ground dries. Now the brawl's favorite meadow grass forms tough clumps. If the brawl and the goats and the marmots grow scarce, the snow leopard's numbers may dwindle or she may migrate in search of another paradise. For the outside world impacts the realm of the snow leopard. Change is happening incrementally, but ever faster and faster, as if the four grounding corners of a Mandela have begun rotating and are spinning wildly out of control. Only humans can save the snow leopard's paradise now. In our first place, traditional artwork uh, was entitled CEO. It's an oil painting by Gabriella Barati Buda. And this is her description. Uh, I had asked her, what do the numbers mean? And she said, Num numbers are codes. They're symbols of, of man of our estrangement from mother nature. Uh, but nature wins 
and the leopard inhabits new spaces where the artificial world created by us has been lost. Uh, it was a very powerful painting. It spoke to the judging panel and it was um, pretty much unanimous that this was the first place. We also had youth competing in the art and poetry contest, and this was first place traditional media youth, uh, Snow Leopard Cub, and it was a watercolor from Devlinny. And this is Floating Away by Zaina Alampia. Uh, it took first place in the digital youth um, division, and also it took grand prize youth artwork. the pause in the eyes. <laughs> this was um, our grand prize winner's description of their artwork. Um, she says, as the snow leopards traditional habitats are impacted by climate change, they have to move ever higher and further to recapture the traditional lands. In her oil painting, she wanted to put the focus on the snow, um, the movement, of the snow leopards symbolizing search for snow, search for their land, the mountain peaks in the background showing no slow, which was to symbolize climate change, um, an overcast sky. But then there was a bit of clear sky. It's entitled Chasing Snow, an oil painting from Jackie Lynn Walsh. Beautiful. We congratulate all of our contestants this year. Their works were just extraordinary. And we hope that you've enjoyed them. Now we're going to move on to um, India. And today we have with us a guest, Wendy Lama. She is uh, the owner, uh, co-owner and founder of Karma Quest Adventure Travel. And our two uh, members of our team, Ashley Lutz Nelson, our director, and Charlene Givet, uh, program manager, were able to travel to India in January and take part in a Karma, Karma, excuse me, Karma Quest Adventure Travel Winter Quest for the Snow Leopard. And Wendy, would you, before we begin this little video that they created, would you like to tell us a little bit about um, trekking for snow leopards in India, in Ladakh? Sure, thank you, Siobhan, and, and hello to everyone. Um, as Siobhan mentioned, uh, Karma Quest Ecotourism and Adventure Travel, based in Half Moon Bay, California, has been operating snow leopard trips to the Ladakh area since 2005. And we've had the amazing um, success of having snow leopard sightings every single trip, which as you know from wildlife um, travel is quite unusual. And that's all because of the partnership uh, that we have with the Snow Leopard Conservancy and the local communities and local tour operators who all these years have helped to protect the snow leopards by um, developing programs that protect their, their herders who live in the mountains, livestock, and thus pretty much eliminating retaliatory killing. So the snow leopards are much more comfortable to be coming a little bit closer and we're able to see them um, with the help of local guides and historic data. So we operate the trip um, every year, uh, usually in February, based on Dr. Jackson's research. This is the best time, February, March, to see the snow leopards when they come down out of the mountains. And we um, send our groups up to from Delhi to Leh and acclimatize for a few days and then drive into the mountains uh, where they camp. Um, at a base camp at around 11, 12,000 feet and take day forays. It's not actually a, a trek where you move camp every night, but you're in a base camp and you go out on day excursions with the guides uh, with high power spotting scopes um, and sometimes sitting, sometimes hiking and watch for the snow leopard. I'm sure we'll see some of that in this video. Um, so we, we have a trip coming up in 2024 again. It's posted on our website, uh, www.karmaquest.com. And I'll have to mention that a portion of the trip um, price goes to support snow leopard uh, conservation in Ladakh through a tax deductible donation to the Snow Leopard Conservancy here. And it's, 
you might think this is just for mountain climbers, but it's not at all. Um, it's, <laughs> it's for people that- A lot of people worry about that, Wendy. <laughs> yeah, it's really for people that want to see a snow leopard. Um, and it is, it is a bit arduous in that you're camping often in the snow and you are at high altitude, but we have heaters in the tents and we have um, three meals a day, cooktop meals served to you. And, and we have um, so many amazing um, stories and quotations of people that just were enamored by seeing the snow leopard in, in the wild. I will mention, as you did, Siobhan, we do a trip to uh, Bhutan, also a snow leopard trip, which is involving, does involve trekking up to about 16,000 feet. Wow. It's <laughs> fabulous to see and participate in the snow leopard festival that's held there every fall but we don't have the track record of the sightings. So if you really want to see these cats in their native habitat, I would suggest uh, looking into the Ladakh trip and I'll be happy to answer questions later. Thank you, Siobhan. Thanks so much, Wendy. Yeah, Ashley and Charlene has saw, they still aren't determined for sure, but they said they saw at least eight snow leopards. And I'm going to play this little video now and you'll get to see some of the snow leopards that they saw.
Well, they said they saw uh, an old fellow that fell there was with his kill, and then the uh, mating pair, and the mother with some cubs, and a solitary male and a solitary female. Next, we're going to move on to Nepal from India and uh, see some photographs from Tashi Argali, uh, an award winning photographer and citizen scientist. Uh, there he is with a camera trap set up. These are some of his photographs that he's taken in the past year or two. We lovingly call Tashi the snow leopard whisperer because he can get so close to these animals. He's had so many sightings. It's amazing. I asked him one time, how do you do it? He said, patience, you just have to wait. <laughs> For them to become comfortable with you. This is a video. Um, takes a minute for this one to load. A lot of folks think that this is just a still. If you can see the branches moving, I'm going to stare down with that cat and the flag. And then, oh, <laughs> he looks away. And here's another video. Takes a moment for it to load. And now we're going to move on to our final um, section of today's program. Uh, we have some very special guests with us today. Uh, Anil Adhikari from Nepal is one of our partners and Rinsen Funjaglama also from Nepal, another one of our partners and uh, Anil, he is a journalist and a writer, and uh, he is the editor of the Snow Leopard magazine. Um, our co-host today, Marsha Civic, is going to be talking with him about his experience on a recent radio program and working with Snow Leopard Scouts. And uh, Rinson is uh, very recent, to, to, uh, 2021, I think, um, recipient of the Rolex Award for Enterprise for his role in promoting local initiatives for, for biodiversity conservation in Nepal's Trans-Himalayan region. Right now, Rinson is actually in San Francisco. I think he was with us last weekend um, at the WCN Fall Expo. And uh, Marsha is going to be talking to him about what's going on and with his projects. And so I'm going to be turning the program over to Marsha at this point, and she'll be talking with Anil first and then Rinson. And then at the end, if you have any questions, you can write them into the chat or we can talk. And when we get all done here with the program, you can turn on your video and your microphones and ask them. But if you do have questions, be sure to write them into the chat. So 
Marsha, if you want to take it away, and Anil and Rinson, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Siobhan. Hello, everyone. Um, hi, Anil and Rinson. Good to see you. Hello. Um, I have a quick question, and this is from our audience, and I they asked it in the chat a while ago. So Anne, Anne asked if, if you know how many snow leopards are left in the wild. Can either one of you answer that question real quick before we get started? Hi, Marcia. Is it, is it in Nepal or globally? Um, I think it's globally. Like just how many do you think that exist in the world? Okay, that's a nice question. We don't have an exact figure, I guess, you know, the estimate says between four to 7,000. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, there has not been a population census as well in the range yeah. country, so estimation only. They're okay. difficult to count due yeah. to where they live in the vertical environment. And uh, some countries have quite a few. China has quite a few, but then there are other countries that don't have very many at all. What is the count that you estimate in Nepal, Rinson? In Nepal, we say, you know, we have between 300 to 400 is not about, but it's the same as, uh, like, the government of Nepal is working on the range-wide assessment now. Mm -hmm. What we are doing in our region, uh, the area outside the protected area. That's a good question. And it's hard to answer. <laughs> it's, yeah. Being they're such not a as big penalties as, as tigers are and, and uh, leopards and lions so yeah. go ahead marcia <laughs> okay well we're going to start um with you anil because i think it's pretty late where you are correct here it's early morning or late evening i think with you <laughs> so welcome okay. so anil how did you get involved with with um snow leopard conservation you know you know working with snow leopards at all um what got you to um, to do this uh, well, thank you, um, uh, Marcia. Uh, it's been 13 years uh, I'm, I'm with Snow Leopard Conservation uh, Mission. And actually, um, I used to work as a consultant for WLF Nepal, uh, and basically for writing assignments. So I used to go to the field uh, and, and pick up best practice stories. And then at the, uh, in 2010, I could have chance to meet uh, the regional, uh, former regional director, Dr. Somali of Snow Leopard Conservancy. Mm -hmm. And he want to have some books in uh, Snow Leopard. Uh, you know, he, he wanted to have a conservation education program in Nepal. So he was searching for a person who could materialize the things and he met me and uh, we had a meeting in Kathmandu and and I proved uh, that uh, I can do best because the uh, first assignment was very good. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, Rodney was in Kathmandu and um, yeah, I could have chance to meet him and we had one writing assignment and uh, that was the account of uh, human uh, snow leopard um, conflict in uh, Annapurna conservation area in, in Upper Mustang. And I documented that storybook and uh, it is, um, it, it, it was a very good book actually. Mm -hmm. and, and then gradually I started working with, uh, you know, the, uh, snow leopard conservation and um, so I'm quite happy that I, uh, you know. <laughs> and now we have a, a snow leopard based, uh, community based snow leopard conservation project. It's been three years. Uh, we are running in two snow leopard habitat districts. Oh, okay. uh, is that the I snow mean, leopard um, scout program? That you're talking about? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, we we also have a yeah, scout program. Actually, Dr. Shom Ali conceptualized this scout program in Nepal. So we had uh, we have a regular uh, annual uh, monitoring visit camp in 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 Mustang, one of the habitat um, uh, protected area. So this is very interesting and lifetime experience for the 
children who live in the habitat, you know, uh, who share the habitat um, and uh, with snow leopard, and it's very unique experience. And we are shortly going to have this camp in um, November three to four. It is residential camp in Mustang. Oh wow, nice! So all all ages of of children, a, many, a wide uh, range of children ages, right? Yeah, actually, um, uh, as you know that, I, th I think, let me show you these two books. Uh, oh, that okay. is uh, for uh, grade seven and eight, and, and the, the government of Nepal published this book. So the, the SCOUT program only focused to the grade seven and eight. Um, so okay. we, have, we only have 12 schools in two districts. So each class uh, represent one male and female student. So all, we we will have all together twelve students in the in, in the camp and six teachers, citizen scientists, ranger. So all together will be twenty five persons for one and a half and two days. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, and, and 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 it is very interesting that they in a few uh, just uh, in two days or one and two days, they can the the scientific knowledge is being dis disseminated mm -hmm. uh, in children and through them it goes to the community. We hope, and and they know they learn how to set up the camera, how GPS works, and you know the fox light and other things. They also come up with the, you know, they share what they have learned uh, so far in the book. And then there are 10 chapters, uh, so related to the communities, you know, the human snow leopard conflict, uh, livelihood, insurance, and many diverse things they are learning. And they, uh, in the camp, they share their experience and learn from other students. Welcome. Yeah, I was going to ask um, Anil if you, uh, Anil has written these fabulous textbooks, Marsha, yeah. uh, for grade school age, and I wondered if you incorporated your textbooks into the scout program too. I wasn't sure about that. Mm -hmm. If you just used them in the school, or if you also incorporated them into the, in the field program too, that's great. Yeah, that, that's a, yeah, that's a big feat. That's, a lot of work so yeah. and neil's a very busy guy <laughs> <laughs> you are so <laughs> yes so you were recently on a, a radio program um what was that experience like and and uh was this where was this what is the radio program by the actually yeah we have a, we are connecting with two we two radio stations in Kathmandu and Taplejung. Okay. So Taplejung Kathmandu is the is uh, the radio Sagarmatha is uh, actually the community radio uh, who initiated um, in the world first time in Nepal from Nepal. So they have as per the station uh, resource uh, they have uh, two point five million uh, BM listeners. So um, uh, and 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 we That's started. A uh, it's uh, we have a uh, five episode broadcast already. Wow! And, and I was also lucky guy that I could have chance to interview. You know, they give the interview to uh, the first episode. They wanted to uh, have my views because I'm running the project. So so it was my first experience. <laughs> Actually, being a journalist, I interviewed many people, and it was my first experience that someone was, you know, interviewing uh, you. <laughs> yeah, I I find it's harder for people to interview me than me to interview them. Actually, yeah. <laughs> and and what happened that I spoke a lot, and I said I told them that okay, you should edit some, you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> edit some of it out <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah and it's I'm, always I'm a challenge good, sorry I, and the good part is uh, the station has been interviewing all major stakeholders uh, you know views that uh, for example just recently there was a view from the deputy director general of national park office Government of Nepal uh, and and WWF representative 
Dr. Gansam Gurung and other uh, community people, students, teachers, all have been targeted and they are giving their voice. And, you know, I hope they are finding snow leopard, you know, and this happening. That's great. Well, it sounds like you have a great uh, number of audience and, and to, to reach out to. So that's wonderful. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I just have another question too. Um, I know, I don't know how we are in time, but you recently conducted a conservation education, uh, nature tours with students in 2023. Um, how was that? And can you talk about that program a little bit? How is that? Is that related to your, um, snow leopards scout program or something uh, different? Uh, uh, yeah, it, it is different than the uh, SCAR program. Actually, um, it never happened in, in, in the eastern, far eastern part of Nepal. Okay. One of the G-SLEP uh, priority snow leopard uh, landscape, conservation landscape. And then uh, we have uh, six schools there who are uh, participating in the, in the book pr program. Okay. So what we did that we had a six different uh, tour, nature tour, snow leopard nature tour. Uh, so it's like, a, you know, having a picnic in the nature. <laughs> actually, oh so the, the I, students, actually, we provided, snow leopard conservancy provided uh, funding support. Okay. So, uh, so we hand over the fund to the school management and they they purchase all the necessary stops and carry all the students carry the stops in the field. So we'll, um, we we went uh, up to 2,700 meters wow. and, and, and stayed, remained there for a whole day. And we had a uh, interaction, how they have perceived the book and how they got benefited from the, you know, the, the using the book and and we also, um, uh, you know, had some clips and interviews of the students and uh, we uh, share how Foxlight works. And that was the new for them because the, you know, Foxlight. And yeah. even though they, they have uh, grasslands uh, and the higher mountain people are, you know, uh, depending on the livestock husbandry and, you know, there, there are conflicts, uh, snow leopard and uh, livestock conflict. And then we introduced camera trap, how it works, and that all the, those things were new to them. And then and, and other people, other students were complaining that we could not participate the nature tour because we had limited resources and, you know. Right. So this has been a very uh, generating the, you know, people have started thinking and you know so this is i think this is good that is good we so you're getting course. enthusiasm from yes. the students That's and terrific. students are wanting to to join more so yeah hopefully you can do more of these for sure and uh get more and then we on. have a challenge how we uh, because we are shortly after uh, we finish uh, the snow leopard camp we'll be we'll having the nature too in, in eastern, eastern part. And so just we are thinking that what uh, other uh, new things we would like to add in, in upcoming event. Right. So, That's fabulous, Anil. Mm -hmm. You're really expanding. That's great. Yeah, thank you for all the, the work you're doing. It sounds wonderful. And I look forward to, to learning more about that. So thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you all to you. Yeah, for yeah, yeah, this is the opportunity to share my views and experiences. I love it. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. So, this is a great picture. We have a rinse and Tashi. <laughs> <laughs> Very old picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but look at how that uh, uh just uh, that mountain up the, the, the vertical right there i it just scares me <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> i don't know you're all little mountain goats i don't know how you do it <laughs> we have a lot of video and film from tashi of him riding a bike up these paths that it's just like i don't i couldn't walk it or ride a bike i <laughs> have to carry me i don't know how we do it the altitude and breathing yeah oh yeah, yeah. 
That's amazing. So, well, nice to see you again, Rinzen. We met at Thank WCN you. last weekend. So, exactly. Which was a, a very Thank busy, fun filled weekend for us all, I think. So, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, thank you for joining. So can you tell tell us today and everybody here, um, how did you get involved with snow leopard conservation and, you know, yeah, and working with snow leopards in general? And have you seen, you You said you haven't seen one yet, is that correct? Yeah, I have seen, but in the last few years, I haven't seen. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Because, you know, so my uh, working with the snow leopard, it was back in 2006, you know, like that was the time when I first saw a snow leopard actually in the wild. Oh, wow. Since then lots of things changed, you know, like, and I studied forestry, so I grew up as a forester. Nepal, like, you know, usually like uh, most of the conservationists, they come from the forestry campus. So where, where I go, like Department of National Park, I'm quite lost. Mm. There's a long story with snow leopard, you know, like I was speaking in one of my TEDx talk last week, I mean, like, uh, like last, earlier this month, not last week. So nice. like we have, I have been hearing about snow leopards in childhood, and then I have an encounter, you know, and then like I get into the field. So it's been now going to be about a decade that I started working on snow leopard. Because uh, it's one of the reasons that I'm passionate about the mountain environment, you know, and the mountain ecology. Mm -hmm. It's the most iconic or the, the most important species that we have, uh, which we consider the umbrella species or the flagship species or the top of the, you know, food chain. So it has lots of ecological and social implications that have uh, profound you know, impact on my life. You know? and, then, and then, like, uh, that is how it led my path towards the conservation. That's wonderful. And, and with all your hard work, I want to say congratulations on the Rolex award that you were just awarded. And, you know, what has the grant enabled you to do in the past year, couple of years since you were awarded that? Yes, thank you. So our work mostly focused on the small, the small scale research and conservation in Nepal, Himalaya. And between 2016 and 19, like we had a collaboration with the Snow Leopard Conservancy uh, that pretty much focused on collaborative research and conservation effort on ground in Annapurna Conservation Area. So we were mostly focusing on Snow Leopard monitoring, prey monitoring. At the same time, big part of the program was focused on human Snow Leopard conflict, with, you know, like mitigation, how we can mitigate conflict on the ground mm -hmm. so that uh, we can reduce the economic loss faced by herders from stone leopard predation and then promote coexistence. So that was pretty much what we were doing in Annapurna. And at the same time, like, you know, back in my hometown, so the area, largest area in Nepal, which is outside the protected area, we are trying to do small scale research. And we were in look, we were searching for the fund so that we can, you know, scale up the work we were doing in a small scale. And Rolex Award was the right platform, you know, like, you know, so with Rolex, Mm -hmm. We are able to do lots of things actually in Hula. Now we have a very, uh, we have like, we have set up huge, uh, you know, structure in, on ground structure, like uh, the conservation effort has been going very well. So we are pretty much focusing on right now, like we are focusing not just on the small, like we are focusing on overall trans Himalayan biodiversity, which is least focused in Nepal, you know, like, and uh, we are focusing on the biodiversity documentation. We are focusing on capacity building of the local conservation institutions, you know, like local citizen scientists and local conservationists. So one of our key goals is to, re, you know, like nurture or train the first generation of the conservation leaders from Humla, which I represent myself, but like more of it, you know, so that we have our local team working on the ground. Sure, yeah. Focusing on our livelihood pilot projects, you know, what could be different sources of livelihood which are viable, you know, like from income generations perspective, we are exploring those opportunities. We are doing on ground conservation of like, you know, patrolling, monitoring and stuff like that. And most of, and uh, education and outreach is a big component because uh, conservation is, is not very familiar term in our region. So we are, you know, we are doing it, like it's quite new term. So we are doing lots of conservation education outreach activities in Humla. And out of all of these, one of the key focus we are working on now is estimating the population of the snow leopard in the region. Okay. So 
Like we are working quite intensively to get the population from the upper canal region. The population is very blue sheep, human wildlife conflict, and lots of things. Actually, Rolex phone enable us to scale up at a large scale at once. Lots of things are going on at once now. I think like I'm very grateful for that. That's great. So what successes um, have you seen, you know, have you experienced since doing some of this work? Do you have any like success stories that stand out as far as reducing some of the wildlife human conflict or um, any? So right that? now, like, you know, it's uh, like we have, like it, it would be too early to say a real success, but like some of the like incidences, you know, like that, that like what you call that makes realize, okay, I think we are, on the right track, like this is like one of our school children. You know, we have a school eco club in eight community school, and student from one of the community school they were up in the past so looking for livestock, and then they saw unusual cat which they have never seen, and then one of the students managed to photograph it from the back, and it was a snow leopard, you know. And this kind of rare sighting or rare like footage are coming up now. People are coming up with lots of footage of these snakes, birds animals you know and then this has never happened before maybe because like we are focusing on more concentrated effort and we have been we are receiving lots of this and also in terms of the information sharings you know if there's a himalayan black bear movement people will inform us okay there's a himalayan black bear you know it damaged the hive or stuff like that so this is some of the things that uh we could feel you know the, the changes is there you know there is a sense of awareness raising so apart from that, like in terms of the solid milestone, like we are not in the position to say that now. Sure, sure, that makes sense. So, um, what do you see? Uh, what does the future hold for you um, as far as snow leopard con conservation um, going so going forward? The community lead conservation is the future. You know, mm -hmm. where like our philosophy is leading by local. So the native conservationists or the local conservationists, they should take the lead now. You know, we shouldn't be waiting for somebody else. So we build our capacity. We've got to build our team. We've got to build our own network and then, you know, like work for it because it is our, like the, whatever the biodiversity resource is there. So we can't expect somebody else to come and do for us. So we have to take the lead. That is why exactly. community-led conservation is the future. And like, we must focus on that. That's great. Yeah. And I love that both you and, and Neil, you know, are working on that and with the children as well. And then the whole land of the snow leopard network with snow leopard conservancy. I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause that, I think that's, that's going to be anywhere in the world. That's the only way that it, it can be successful. I think. If, exactly. Yeah. I might beautiful. go to some area for a few years and I have to leave that area in like, you know, in some time. Right. So, to be the locals like who only can continue you know i think that is the most i think they are like you know like this is very like important and this is very powerful notion look or uh, the indigenous or the like you know, native because they are going to be there for generations so they should take the responsibility and that is what i'm trying to represent in my reason you know yeah oh. i love that yeah yeah, and I love. You know, you're to... right, Marsha. It yeah. applies everywhere. I, yeah. I see it here in the Midwest in the United States. We have coyotes, and right. people they consider them a pest and they want to shoot them. And it's like you don't understand population biology, you know, genetics, and and it's just you have to work with the people who live right there. They have mm -hmm. to be part of the solution. Otherwise, there is no solution in it. Right. It doesn't matter if you're in Africa or in Asia or in the United States or where or South America, wherever. If you don't work with the people who are living side by side with the animal, that's the quote unquote problem. You're not going to have a solution. And I, I, I applaud both Anil and Rinson. They're just doing fabulous work. Yeah. Um, I agree. You, it, and I, it's all got to be community based. And, uh, I think so. And I think like with the scout program with Anil too, reaching the children, the children are going to influence the parents. You know, they're yeah. going to be the ones learning some of this yeah. newer technology coming out that maybe the parents and the, the older generations don't have. That's what exactly. I love so much exactly. in that film of uh, Jar Japarkul when he was he works with kids all the time in the schools and outside of schools and the little ones it's it, and he talks to them about how important it is 
you know, that we have to get along, you know, live with nature, mm-hmm. not against nature and mm-hmm. return to living with nature instead of being separated from it and protecting all animals. You know, he talks about protecting the trees and, and the animals and everything. And it's, um, you guys are doing just such fabulous work, Rinson and Anil. Thank you so much for all that you do. Uh, Thank, you. For your, Thank you. For your communities, for your for your country, for the world. Um, it's so exciting to be part of this, um, I think, today. And it's so important. And uh, thank you for all of you for joining today um, and taking part in Wendy. <coughs> it's, um, it's just so important what you guys are doing. You're protecting our world for us and for future generations. And But it all has to be grassroots. It's all got to be commun- to the community. They're the ones that need to be in charge. And, um, and you need, they need to understand, you know, that's why awareness and education is so important because sometimes they don't even understand, you know, there might not be just that basic understanding that Like the snow leopard, yes, we know he's ecologically important. He's an apex predator, but like with Japarkul, he's also a cultural, the snow leopard is also a cultural and spiritual um, important animal uh, and species. And it's, um, and it all comes together. And I I hope everyone has enjoyed how, you know, we've kind of virtually trekked through all these countries that we work in um, today. And I'm so glad that um, that Anil and Rinson and could be with us, and it's a special treat that Wendy could join us. And Marsha, thank you so much. Oh, you're uh, welcome. Thank for, you everyone. for doing that today. If you guys want a copy of Searching for the Snow Leopard, you can uh, find that on our on our website. You can always get, also get it through Amazon and uh, Barnes and Noble and that, and some of the indie bookstores. And it, it is available as an ebook too. Um, If anyone is interested in the art and poetry contest over the last five years, all that is up on our website. Um, Beautiful stuff. And and those folks, they donate all that um, to us, you know, to use across our um, our social media channels and our website and and uh, newsletters. I want to thank everyone for coming today. Any of you could attend today. I want to thank all of you. Um, all the participants, Wendy, thank you for joining us if she's still on with us and nope. everyone who was a visitor today. I hope you enjoyed the program. Rinson and Anil, thank you so much for participating. I'm sorry thank it's you. so late at night, um, Anil, and <laughs> I'm glad you were in San Francisco, so it isn't too late at night for you. And um, both of these uh, gentlemen, of course, you can reach them about their projects through us at any time. Um, if you guys have any, if you want to, they're on Facebook. I know Rinson has is has a presence on social media. If you guys have uh, something you want to type into the chat where they can reach you, like through a website directly or your social media contact, you can go ahead and do that if you like. Or, or today's um visitors you can contact them through us but uh it's just been a joy celebrating snow leopards with all of you and i am going to bid farewell to everyone i'm gonna i think i'm gonna stop the um the recording thank you everyone happy snow leopard day bye-bye happy snow leopard day to you too thanks so much